Okay, let's talk about how to simplify this algebra problem. So what we have here is a over b plus c over d plus x over y, and we want to simplify this into one expression. So this is definitely a uh, skill that you need to know how to do in algebra, and there's a couple different approaches to um, simplify this problem. Now, I'm going to um, highlight my one of my favorite algebra hacks or fraction hacks to do this particular problem. So uh, if you haven't seen it, I have a lot of videos on fractions in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. It's extremely important to know how to deal with fractions in algebra. And uh, I'm going to highlight again this uh, very, very great tool. You just simply have to know this, especially when you're dealing with um, fractions that involve variables. So I'm going to get to all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, of course, I'm going to let you be the judge of that statement. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses uh, starting from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But all my uh, courses have taken me literally years to construct. I don't do little quick tutorials, I, I, and I really teach. When you take one of my courses, you know, it's for you. For my goal is to get you to master, truly, fully comprehend this material because too often uh, students will take you know courses or uh, use programs that um, have the topics, but they just kind of quickly or lightly go over them. I don't do that. So if you really want to learn this stuff, you want to check out my math courses. But I also have uh, a lot of courses in the area of test preparation. Uh, those would include courses like GED, um, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT. Uh, oh boy, there's so many. Uh, CLEP exam, Alex, AccuPlacer, teacher certification exams, nursing entrance exams. So there's a lot of reasons why people are studying mathematics outside of a math course. Okay, A lot of these exams have a lot of math on it. If you don't pass the math sections on these exams, you will not pass. Okay? And it has uh, serious consequences for those of you who are trying to achieve your uh, respective goals. Um, I also uh, work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program. And then also I just help those of you out there that are struggling in your math classes. So if you're taking, for example, Algebra 1, yeah, my program can definitely help you out. Now, one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take excellent math notes almost always do very, very well at the end of their course. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to talk to their best friends, maybe they have somebody in the class, like the, you know, one of their good friends, are like, hey, listen, you have better notes than I do. You take the notes and I'll copy them down. You know, listen, I was, uh, you know, back in the 1980s, I did all these things. But guess what? I paid a price for it, and you're going to pay a price for it as well. There's just so many distractions. If you're learning mathematics, you have to remain focused all the time. You can't uh, uh, remain unfocused because one day, one class of not understanding something can really set you back. You'll be surprised, okay? So the way, the discipline that you need to build is constant great note-taking. If you do that, believe me, everything will go smooth for you. Now, uh, in the meantime, right, you still need something to study from as you're improving your notes. Uh, most of you out there could stand improvement in your note-taking. Some of you just need to start taking notes. So that's, you know, a step up. But uh, you still need something to study from. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, now, if you think you can do this problem, I would always encourage you to pause the video and, you know, mess around with it. See what you can do. You should, you should be able to do this. Now, if you're in algebra, at an algebra level, or maybe like an algebra 1 level, you certainly need, uh, uh, need to know how to do this, and you should. Well, it depends on where you're at in the course, let's say. If you're just starting to learn algebra 1, maybe you haven't gotten to this point, but... Uh, by the time you finish with this video, you'll like be an expert at this stuff. So let's get into this little technique. I always share this in, in many of my videos because it's such a great tool. Let's talk about um, adding or subtracting fractions. So let's take the fractions one half plus three fifths. Now I'm going to have another pair of fractions here: x over w plus z over g. Okay. Now here. Uh, 
we should know, or hopefully you should know, that you need to find the LCD in order to um, add fractions, right? So the LCD here would be 10. So I'm going to multiply this by 5, and this by 5, and this by 2, and this by 2. And yes, you need to know how to do that. You need to know how to find the LCD of uh, fractions, including variable fractions. So you definitely need to know that. And I teach all that as well. But that, uh, you don't have to always... Uh, use the LCD to add or subtract fractions, okay? There's a completely different kind of shortcut method. I love this method. I call it the bow tie method. So here's how it works, okay? You take this denominator down here. Specifically, I'm starting from the one that's in the bottom right. I'm going to multiply this way. Then I'm going to take this one. I'm going to multiply this way. So let me go ahead and do that now. So it's 5 times 1. I'm multiplying. So 5 times 1 is 5. This is an addition problem, so I'm putting plus... 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, that right there is your numerator. Then you're going to uh, put a little fraction bar, and then you're going to go 2 times 5. That is 10. So 5 plus 6 is 11. So 11 over 10, you just did uh, this problem. Okay, it is done. Right, so you didn't have to change the LCD over to 10. You can see we have 10 in our denominator. This is a fantastic way to add and subtract fractions. Now, the one drawback on this uh, technique is sometimes you don't end up with the lowest common denominator. So oftentimes you may have to simplify or reduce your fraction, but your fraction, your answer will be uh, correct, okay? However, it may not be fully simplified. But again, this is super easy. So let's just review. So it's five times one is five. This is an addition problem, so it's plus. If it was a subtraction problem, I would put subtract uh, a subtraction operator right there. 2 times 3, that's 6. Then I have my fraction bar, okay, because this is the numerator. 2 times 5 is 10, and I am done. So let's go ahead and do this problem here. You can It works the same way with variables. So it's going to be x times g, that's xg, plus w times z, that's wz in algebra. Okay, that's how we represent multiplication. Uh, over, okay, wg, and that's it. So, uh, you know, this is like one, two, three. If you understand this, then you can do this, right? So it was this times this, this times this over W times G, okay? Now, this is the tool that I'm going to be using in this problem. So here, let's get to the actual problem now. Matter of fact, let me back up because if you feel like you can do this problem, then you should do it. So I have three fractions, this one, plus this one, plus this one. So how do we, you know, what's a good way to approach this? Well, I'm going to give you a guideline here because if you want to um, uh, try this on your own, this is what you want to do. Uh, all three of these fractions, let's just add up this set of fractions first, get our answer, and then we'll add that answer with this fraction. So that's what you want to do. So use this technique and this strategy. And if you, uh, you know, really want to try it, then pause the video and go ahead and do it because I am going to show you the solution now. So pause the video if you don't want to see my solution, and here it comes. All right, so here's the problem. And again, I'm going to use this little bow tie uh, technique hack. So it's awesome. It's one of my favorite tools in math. So I'm going to take this, uh, these sets of fractions first. I'll work on the, these guys, get an answer, and then I'll tie it in with this last fraction. And uh, a good way of doing that is to use grouping symbols, okay, like brackets or parentheses. So let's go ahead and get to it. So it's going to be, um, for these two fractions, D times A, that's AD, or A times D doesn't make a difference. D, A, or A, D, they're equivalent um, algebraically. Plus, it's plus, right, B times C, that's B, C, over B times D, right down there. That's it. That's like one, two, three, right? So this is an answer. This is a fraction now with a numerator and one denominator. Now, at this point, I can uh, tie it in with this fraction. Now, one thing I want to um, highlight, and you can see here, okay, we're going to multiply, uh, or, I'm sorry, add this fraction with this fraction now, is when you have a sum or difference in algebra, like this, like a plus or a minus, you always want to uh, put uh, additional parentheses in because you can get in trouble if you don't. All right, so that's why I did that here. Okay, let me kind of scroll down. Okay, so this is where we're at. So we have AD plus BC over BD plus X over Y. So that's where we're at. Um, now let's pick up the problem. We're going to use the same technique again. So it's going to be Y times this, 
Okay, so that's Y times uh, parentheses AD plus BC. See, if I didn't have the parentheses, then I wouldn't, I could get myself in trouble algebraically, and I'll show you this here in a second. Okay, you need to have these parentheses. So Y times that plus BD times X, all right, which is XBD or BDX, their equivalent, okay, over, over uh, this times this. So that's BD times Y right there. Okay. Now at this at this juncture, you're pretty close to being done. This would be, um, you know, if you gave me this answer, I would probably give you full credit on a uh, test or quiz. But really, I want you to do one additional thing, and that we have this y outside of this expression. We can use the distributor property to uh, distribute in that y. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. So here is that problem. So we have this y outside of this sum. So let's go ahead and uh, take that y. We'll multiply it by, by both of those terms. So that's going to be yad plus y times bc, which is ybc, plus our xbd all over this bdy. Now, at this point, you want to look and see, do you have any like terms? And then you want to add any respective like terms if you had them. But we don't have any like terms here. Now, here we have yad if you know somebody wrote d a y like day or had these variables in a little bit different order um, that would be perfectly okay i'd still give you full credit so if you got this answer right you know and like you just you know that's amazing you know i'm going to say amazing but i'm going to definitely give you a happy face with a little bit of a mohawk and an a plus and a 100 percent and let's give yourself a couple stars here as well. Because this is showing you that you have pretty solid skills in dealing with algebraic uh, fractions, fractions involve, involving variables. Now, if you did this using like the lowest common denominator and everything else, that's fine. Okay. However, I want to stress to you the value of understanding this bow tie method, this hack. It's a great, great technique. You should just absolutely have that in your math uh, skill set toolbox. And I have a lot of videos on this in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my channel, um, kind of demonstrate that technique over and over and over again, because, you know, fractions in algebra are everywhere. Okay, so you need to know how to deal with them. Okay, so if this video was a good review for you, if you just enjoyed it, if you just learned something new and you liked it, well then please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. Have a lot of videos from basic to advanced math all organized on my channel. My goal is one is just basically uh, to try to teach math as clear and understandable as I possibly can to help you out. Okay, there's there's really should be nobody failing mathematics. Okay, if you're, if you're struggling in math, you know it's oftentimes uh, you're not taking your, your you know you need to improve in your note taking and then help yourself right if you don't like your teacher's instructional style you know if you're not getting their teacher or they teach too quickly or whatever the case is or the time of day you're not as focused or whatever the case is, you have to help yourself take initiative and uh these days there's like no excuse there's so much out there video based stuff free stuff you know like youtube you know i have literally a thousand plus videos i'm posting stuff all the time so take great notes the best you can and then go find a teacher that you like and uh, you know that teaches you in a clear and understandable way and hopefully i could be that teacher so um if you're in let's say algebra or whatnot i have a lot of videos uh many many videos in my algebra playlist uh, but my best work will always be within my math help program Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.